Hey Gemini, happy November. I do hope that this video finds you well. We are ending off 2022 with a bit of a crescendo, which shock, shock, is anyone really surprised? We are between two eclipses at the time of this recording. We had the first solar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio on October 25th, and we are headed towards the total lunar eclipse in the sign of Taurus on November 8th. I actually am holding a sale on my website through this time, so if you are interested in a personal reading or distance Reiki session, now is an excellent time to book. You can get 20% off. Just click on the link in the description box down below. I'd love to work with you. Um, as I was really connecting with your energy though, Gemini, I honestly was just sending you Reiki and, and, and sending you healing because it feels like there's just something, maybe something really big is going on in your life. I really don't know why I felt like I needed to do that. Um, but I, I just felt called and knowing that we have a full moon lunar eclipse in Taurus at the start of this month, you might be really feeling something come ahead for your mental health and your spiritual health. There might be some issues or there might be some things that are really like hard to ignore during this time. And the, the Taurus energy for you represents the subconscious. So there could be things that are happening or situations that you are becoming aware of that you had no idea were even going on. So there might just be that weird sort of like glitching, glitchy kind of moment at the beginning of this month. And if you are experiencing that, know that there is something that is shifting in your subconscious and really sit with and reflect uh, during this time. Sit with yourself, meditate, introspect, journal, talk to a therapist, do something that will help you process anything that is unprocessed. That's really what the start of November is all about for you. We are also in Scorpio season, naturally, so there is a lot of focus on routine and wealth or health and wellness, maybe, maybe wealth for some of you too. Um, and maybe some of you have just been so in the grind. You, you've been trying to get something done. You've been so focused on projects or your tasks or chores or whatever it is, um, that you may have, you may be realizing how you've neglected your mental health. So that could be a potential that is kind of unfolding at the beginning of this month. Yeah, we have the butterfly transforming, transforming, transformations. Um, some of you are coming out of a very transformative period. And when the butterfly comes up, it's like kind of this delicate, beautiful time. So really do be gentle with yourself at the start of this month. Um, especially if there's something going on, a big change that is affecting your heart in a very deep way. We have butterfly and we have the lamb. I, I keep, to be honest, I keep getting this, this image of you like, I keep feeling like, or hearing crying, like in your bed, um, crying at night, crying yourself to sleep. And I don't think this is necessarily energy that is going to happen. Like, don't freak out if you're, like, not doing that right now. But I feel like a lot of you have just been going through it. And you're coming into this month in a very raw sort of place. Or something is stirring up these really intense emotions. And we have the lamb. And, like, it, it went from this very painful or... or tumultuous place to a very calm place very serene and really like listening is important right now too and kind of funny you're gemini you're the communicator but we do have mars going retrograde in your sign um and that could really be stirring up quite a bit especially as we get into sagittarius season there could be some conflict there could be some feeling misunderstood or misinterpreted by people in a way that you, you might be taking personally. And that I just kind of feel like with this lamb energy, it's almost like disconnecting from that drama, disconnecting from life, just to the point where you're almost seeing your own life like a play. And instead of being lost in the character that you are playing, the role that you are filling, you have this different, almost uh, appreciation 
for your life and for the ups and downs and, and for the dramas and for, for the kind of roller coaster we're all on. <laughs> um, it's almost like there is this pause where things just feel really beautiful and, and I'm kind of getting that around the eclipse, I think. Um, it, it could be a very disruptive time, but it's also like in such a way where you kind of zoom out and it's almost like nothing really matters. That's really, really interesting. You'll have to let me know in the comments section down below how this is making sense for you. Um, and of course, these are general messages, so not all of them are going to apply, but if you're not going through a hard time or you're not going through issues with your mental health, I actually don't feel like this reading is for you. Um, you may want to check out your moon or rising sign. And if you don't know what those are, I have those. Uh, I have a natal chart calculator in the description box down below that should be able to help you figure those things out. Um, but let's see. Let's see. Ooh. I, you know, I, I said that disclaimer at the perfect time because we have the Nine of Wands, the Six of Cups, and the Nine of Swords. So there is definitely some mental health stuff going on. There's definitely a lot of healing that is taking place psychologically. The Nine of Wands feels like burnout. It feels like, you know, I actually pulled all of these cards in the reverse. I don't read reversals with this deck ordinarily, but I, I do notice it sometimes, and it just really stuck out to me. With the Nine of Wands energy, it just feels like this sense of being defeated. And it's like kind of ruminating on the things you never achieved or the things you never had, the relationships you never had, the job you never had. And it's almost like you're talking about your life like it's already over. And that's what I'm getting for the past energy. So maybe this is something coming up for October or even just the past year overall. Um, a lot of you are, are kind of talking about your life story like it's already all happened. And you're having a hard time seeing what is next for you. And with the Six of Cups in reverse, it's like there's pain, there's healing that needs to take place. Some of you are doing some sort of ancestral work or healing intergenerational trauma. And you need to get to the root of why you are feeling the way you are feeling and really get to the heart of the matter. And it's almost like You've been tense. You've been really resistant, clenching. And I really get the sense, Gemini, like, if you just let go and soften and kind of release to this celestial dissolve, like, there is a very spiritual transformation that is taking place. And with the butterfly... This transformation is no joke. Because the way a butterfly becomes a butterfly, the way a caterpillar becomes a butterfly, is that it goes into this chrysalis, it closes itself off from the world, and completely in dissolves inside of its chrysalis, inside of its cocoon. And it just exists in kind of this goop. And it reforms. And it's like you have to lose who you are, the old story, and let that just sort of melt in order to become who you are meant to be, which is this butterfly. And again, the Nine of Swords. Some of you are so stuck inside your own head, and it's kind of like that chrysalis energy, that cocoon energy. You've actually become sort of imprisoned inside of yourself. And you're kind of reaching a point where it's like, you need to talk to someone, or you need to do something differently. Because with the Nine of Swords, it's like the harder you're trying to solve things and fix yourself, it's almost like 
the harder it is to see what's actually wrong and what's actually coming up and going on for you. Because I feel like a lot of you have been in sort of this cycle of like distress and trying to fix yourself, trying to heal yourself, trying to transform. But it's almost artificial. You can't force a spiritual transformation. You can't force a spiritual awakening. You have to almost surrender to it. And really give up a lot of things that might leave you feeling like, who am I? What am I? Because you've been in this sort of larval stage. You've been the caterpillar. You haven't seen your full potential, not even a little bit. Or you haven't realized it completely. You haven't realized your potential. There is still so much potential for this group. I just, I have to say this. Like, there is still so much of your life that is to be lived. We have the High Priestess with the Five of Pentacles and bottom of the deck, Eight of Swords. I'm telling you, some of you are so stuck inside yourself. It almost feels like there's a conflict where I, I get this kind of sense of like people yelling at each other and someone just like well why are you doing this like why are you saying this and the other person just breaks down and is cracked open and is like i i'm actually really hurting and struggling right now and i kind of feel like it's you gemini i kind of feel like it's you and there is just this moment there is something happening maybe it's around the holidays um where it's like you're opening up and that makes a lot of sense. Um, we, we do have the new moon on November 23rd. And this is a new beginning relative to relationships and connecting with other people. Um, but the High Priestess and the Five of Pentacles... I feel like some of you are going through the initiation to become a priestess or to become a healer. I feel like that's come up a lot actually for you this year, for, for my Gemini. Um, and it, it's like you are going through the spiritual initiation. There's a path that you are being forged towards, or you are being forged to go down a certain path to fulfill a specific role. And that's part of this transformation. Like you're at this period right now where you have lost so much you've lost a sense of self you've lost what made you feel alive and you're so confused you might even feel betrayed by the universe you might feel forsaken um but you haven't been forsaken and in a couple years time i think you are going to look back and you are going to see your life very clearly you're going to understand why certain things didn't work out you're going to see what the, the the theme, the lesson here was during this time. Really, really intense energy, I'm not gonna lie. Um, but it feels like this this part of your journey is very necessary. And let's pull for the end of the month and beyond. Let's look for the future here. We have the star. Wow. Yeah, this is finding hope, finding faith. You are finding your faith again. Um, and it's almost like you have gotten so stuck, Gemini, in trying to understand why certain things have happened in your life that you no longer have faith. Like you're trying to understand the lesson now and you're just not going to. And you're trying to understand because it feels wrong. You don't trust in your life. You don't trust in the universe right now. I, I see the heartache. I do see the pain here with the Three of Swords and the Magician underneath that. This is your card. 
there is alchemy to be had in this in this pain, in this sorrow, in this heartache. And I feel like you're going to understand your suffering in a very different way. And the star does represent healing. Sometimes like energetic healing. Some of you might be seeing an energy healer. Some of you might be pursuing some sort of healing modality. And even though there is the darkness, it is helping you see the stars. It is helping you see the divine. And this feels like that, that sort of moment where I, I was describing at the beginning, it's almost like you kind of zoom out of your life, zoom out of your story for a minute and just see things in a very different way. And I really do feel like there's something hard going on for Gemini right now. Maybe there's the end of a relationship, the end of a job, and you are sitting here wondering, why is this happening to me? This, this can't be happening, almost like a denial. And it's because you don't see all the beautiful things that are going to come in your future. Don't lose sight in this pain. I'm going to pull some more cards. Um, but honestly, that, that feels like pretty, that, that feels like a period that feels like there is something very major happening this month. Like this feels like the most important part of the reading. I am going to look at relationships. I am going to look at love and, and work stuff too. Um, but again, it's like there is something so big and existential that it's almost like you zoom out and, and nothing actually really matters. You're just experiencing a, a fraction of your lifetime right now. And just an infinitesimally small fraction of the universe and of time. Eight of Swords with relationships. Yeah, some of you are really stuck. Some of you might feel stuck in a relationship. Some of you might feel stuck in your patterns. Um, some of you just feel isolated. You don't see that you've already changed and transformed. And it's like, I really get the sense with the Eight of Swords, some of you have stayed in relationships that have kept you small. And you haven't been able to spread your wings this butterfly imagery has been very, very recurring in this reading, I will say. Um, and it feels like... There's almost this sense of being comfortably uncomfortable with other people or in relationships. Like, you might be in relationships that you know aren't good for you or connecting with people in ways that doesn't feel healthy. But it almost like it uh, scratches an itch sort of thing. Or it, it just like helps calm you just enough to stay there. For others of you, you might feel entrapped in a relationship or in a situation with other people. You feel like there's no way out. So let's get some advice. Let's get some advice. Um, Six of Swords. Moving forward, looking forward, finding hope, finding optimism, even if you don't know where this journey is leading you, it's like you're leaving this troubled past behind, you're looking forward to the future, this rainbow, the end of this storm. Everything is temporary, even your suffering, even your heartache, even this, this pain that you have been in, this struggle you have been in, because again, I'm really connecting with a group this month that is struggling. And if you are not struggling, if you haven't been in this very deep soul searching or dark night of the soul, this just isn't your reading. Um, thanks for watching, but I, 
I feel like I'm connecting with people who really need to hear this message, however many or few of you there are. Um, and the Ace of Cups. And I actually see this Ace of Cups as self-love, even though we're asking about love and relationships. It's like asking yourself the question, what would a person who loves themselves do? And it's almost like you're entering into a relationship with yourself. And that question is so accessible because we can ask it at any time. It doesn't have to be just for big things, but even just small little things we do each day, stepping into that energy of self-love. We can't just automatically turn on a switch and expect us to love ourselves and to know ourselves. We have to get to know ourselves in the little things. And so you may be doing something very gradual, very incremental to help you build a stronger relationship to yourself. And in that process, there may be new love, there may be a new relationship, but that's not really the point, at least right away. Um, there could be someone new who is helping you get over a situation that has been entrapping or that you have felt very stuck on. That could be happening towards the end of this month with the new moon in Sagittarius. Um, And I think it's right around that time that we also have your ruling planet Mercury joining together with Venus, the planet of love and beauty. And again, I, I do believe this is in Sagittarius, so it's like there's a lot of focus on communication and maybe some new beginnings. Um, but it's not even the point. Like, the person isn't the point. <laughs> like that, That's not what you need to gain. It's not a new person. It's a new relationship with yourself and your own emotions. That's the thing that's really beautiful here. That's the transformation you're actually looking for. That's the love you're looking for. You have the love you've been looking for. You just have to unbury it. Death card. Transformation. Endings. Change. Yeah, a lot of you really are, again, letting go of some really big things. Um, the way you have operated is just something that you can't continue to do anymore. And the death card is not always negative. I know it's kind of a scary card. I know people see it and they're like, ooh, it's kind of like the tower as well. Sometimes we see that card and we're afraid of it because it means something is ending or something is changing but the death card can signify the end of a hard time, of a painful chapter. Some of you have held on to a relationship or held on to friendships or connections that have actually kept you stuck in bad cycles, in, in low vibrational energy. And it's like you can't love yourself and stay in this energy anymore. Something has to be different. And it's a very genuine like shift I'm feeling for this group. It's not just you being like, oh, I can't do this anymore. Like, I know this is bad for me. And, and like trying to shame myself into a different pattern. You're not trying to shame yourself into healing anymore. You are healing. Because the things that once brought you comfort or kept you in, in unhealthy cycles are no longer fulfilling you in any way anymore. It's become hollow. It's become empty. You're seeing things from a wider perspective. And I'm just looking at the time. I want to finish this before the 30 minute mark because that's when the camera cuts off. Um, I want to pull for finances and career as well. But you might need to watch this video a few times, honestly, to really get all the messages and, and to really let things sink in. Um, I'm just kind of getting that impression for this group. Finances. We have the Five of Wands and the Three of Swords. Wow. There could be some sort of, like, conflict in the workplace or some sort of betrayal that is going on. Again, like, this isn't an easy energy. I'm just being honest. Um... Or there could be people fighting about money or fighting over resources. 
I'm getting the sense some of you are even seeing stories about this, and that's, like, really hurting you. Um, and the Hanged Man. Again, kind of detaching, seeing things from a different perspective. Um... Be mindful of working with a Pisces this month. That feels really important. Um, what do we do with this conflict? Interesting. Um, Page of Pentacles. Some of you actually might be coping with conflict in your life through work right now. Or there could be work situations where you are seeing dynamics from your own life playing out in other people's lives. That could be coworkers, that could be clients, that could be patients, that could be whatever it is that you do for work. Um, there, there could be some sort of like vicarious healing. Like by working with other people or, or seeing other people in a different environment, you're seeing parts of yourself. And that is also part of this integration process you are undergoing this month. Um, anything for finances? King of Pentacles, we do love to see that. I feel like you are building f solid foundations. It feels like some of you are getting a financial plan in order. Um, really figuring out not just ha how to have enough wealth for yourself and your daily life, but for your future, you know, potentially even intergenerational wealth. Um... You're kind of getting your shit together. And the Two of Cups, th this could be representing a partnership or a bond or contract, specifically with a Taurus or another Earth sign, so Virgo or Capricorn energy. Um, if you have Earth anywhere in your chart, I would really pay attention to that planet or, or to that placement, um, because that feels like something that's going to be really important for you to connect with. But... I'm almost feeling like there's a, an, again, like a situation you're leaving behind and there's a new contract and it might be totally different from the work you have been doing with the Page of Pentacles, but by knowing your worth, you're not going to stay in energy that doesn't serve you anymore. And the lovers, interesting. There might even be like an office romance for some of you, just with the Two of Cups and the lovers together. Um, but I, I feel like there's this commitment, there's this new project, there's this new prospect that feels very promising. Um, and it's like committing to what you love, do what you love and you will be successful at that. You don't need to wait to be successful enough before you commit to your passions. If you commit to your passion, Gemini, I really do feel like you will find a way to make that abundant and make that stable for you. And I think that's the message. Um... That, that just kind of feels like a completion. Anyways, Gemini, I do hope this was helpful. I, I hope this wasn't too heavy. Definitely let me know what is going on in the comment section down below. Share your predictions as well. It feels like there's a lot of things that are, are just like kind of at a breaking point, but in almost a beautiful way in retrospect. Like you're going to look back at this month and this time and the struggle you've been in and really see how like this was actually a turning point. Um, so really, really beautiful. If you are interested in a reading or Reiki session, again, all of my information is down below. You can watch the videos for your moon or rising sign. There might be something there for you as well. And I am wishing you a very blessed November. Take care, Gemini, and I will see you in the next video.